Welcome students. This small video is for those uh, postgraduates in OBG who are targeting this year's NEET SS, that is NEET SS 2023. Uh, the students who want to know what is to be done if they uh, are starting right now. So a common question that arises in your mind, especially after seeing those toppers videos, is that what are those characteristics of a topper? Uh, can you decide among your group of friends who's preparing that, who's talented enough, who has read enough to be able to qualify? So you have to clarify this, that there are no such characteristics. Right now, where you are, what all you have read, how talented you are, how perseverant you were before, is not going to matter. What is going to be Mattering more is what you do from now on the next nine, 10 months, how you utilize these months. Uh, similarly, the very common question that arises is many students say, I have never read Spiroff. I have never read Barak and Hacker. Uh, does this mean I don't have any chance? It's just the opposite. It just doesn't mean anything. If you have read those books, it helps. But if you haven't read the big books, now is the time that you start preparing. Not I'm not saying now is the time that you start reading those books. In fact, now is the time that you close those books like Spiroff and Barak and Hacker. If you have not read before, if you have read before, it might help revising. So, uh, as I already said, the answer is not decided yet who will qualify. It depends on whether you start preparing today or not. So, today is the day that you should start preparing for NEET SS 2023. Now, coming to what all should be done now. The most important thing which I have, you know, uh, the conclusion that I've drawn from seeing the past three years papers 2020, 21 and 22 is that uh, a lot of questions which can be answered are from guidelines. So you have to be thorough with RCOG, GTG guidelines. You have to be thorough with ACOG, Practice Bulletin and Committee Opinions. Uh, then there are ESHRI guidelines. You just have to type on Google ESHRI guidelines. They're freely available. You get a list of nine, 10 guidelines out of which PCOS, all of them are important. But the most important right now are PCOS and endometriosis guidelines, which you have to read. You have to know the recommendations in and out. Now, just one reading will not help. If you read all of this, still you will not be able to answer any questions on this unless you have revised. So now is the time that you start. Now you will do those things which need a lot of revision. So guidelines need many revisions. And you should be able to answer every uh, question which is asked from these guidelines. You cannot miss them. Then ASRM, there are a few guidelines, committee opinions, which you have to read, read from ASRM also. Uh, time again, I'll be telling them. Right now, if you're just starting, if you're doing basics in gynecology, ASRM guidelines will be a diff little difficult for you to understand. Now, uh, for the classes, the Repronit classes, I have a new folder uh, up called Updates 2023, which is available to all of you all who have registered. So follow those classes, finish everything that we have finished in Updates 2023. At the same time, it is going to take some time for me to start cancers. Now, uh, I've done a few chapters in obstetrics. We've done contraception. Now we'll be starting on basic gynecology so that we can start infertility. And then uh, parallelly, I will try to start cancers also. So cancers are going to take some time to start, but cancers is one of those topics which you have to keep reading and rereading in these nine months to be able to answer. Now, like three years papers, all the papers are unpredictable. 2020 and 2021 was majorly gynecologic oncology paper. A few basic questions from reproductive medicine and a few good questions from OBS and gynae. This year, it was a complete OBS paper. Few questions from gynae, very few questions from oncology and few questions, very few from reproductive medicine. So you cannot expect what kind of paper is going to be. Uh, there are certain topics which need multiple revisions like guidelines, as I already said, and cancers need multiple revisions. So you have to, though we are not going to be starting cancer very soon in updates 2023 in the live classes, you still have to start reading cancers. You still have to start going through those uh, very good recorded video lectures that I've put on cancers. So from the classes, I want you to start following updates 2023 and finish the, you know, uh, be where everyone is, um, go along with me in the completion of syllabus and then simultaneously start cancer videos and cancer notes and test series of course when you take a chapter when you want to finish it you have to do the test series questions also this year i'll be discussing all the test series questions in the live classes 
Now, if you want to read books, do not read Spiroff uh, because it takes a year to complete Spiroff. If you have read Spiroff also, the questions that you get from Spiroff, we have covered. These are basic questions and you read the whole chapter, you get one MCQ out of it. Uh, it's very time consuming. I'm just justifying that this is now is not the time to start reading Spiroff. Uh, we'll be covering the basics from Spiroff in gynecology, general gynecology and reproductive medicine part. Uh, Berek and Hacker, if you have read before, if you have opened the book, it helps to keep revising a few points every day. But the most important book which I want you all to read is Williams Obstetrics. Now, Williams Obstetrics, there are two kinds of chapters. There are basic chapters like placenta, physiology of pregnancy, all those initial chapters what happens to the cervix and uterus in pregnancy, all those chapters, the basics, which are not covered in guidelines. They are important to be done from uh, Williams obstetrics. The clinical chapters like hypertension and diabetes, you may do those chapters, but they just quote ACOG guidelines. So if you have to start reading Williams obstetrics, which I would suggest that if you have time, right now is the time. So you can read guidelines. You will find time for obstetrics, Williams obstetrics. It is not a very book, big book. Do basic chapters. Now, when you do such intense studying, like you do guidelines, you just have to memorize them. When you do classes, uh, these are intense, high yielding readings that you do. You read for one hour, you will be able to solve four MCQs. But when you do three textbooks, you have to give in a lot of time. But at the same time, it is easier to read textbooks. It is like reading a novel. It is like you're understanding. It's like you're talking with someone. So, you know, to ease yourself out in the day, you can pick one textbook to read, which I would suggest is William Substetric. So, as I said, you read guidelines, you follow classes, and one book to read is Williams Obstetrics. Berek and Hacker, you may read if you have read before. If you have not read before, do not open. We'll be discussing that. And they don't ask very difficult questions in oncology, considering the last year's paper. And if they ask difficult questions, we have covered them all in the class notes. So much so that the students who had read reproductive uh, rep reproductive classes, they were able to get very good scores in INISS exam, which was a completely oncology paper. So don't worry about oncology. We'll be covering that. You don't have to do Beric and Hacker if you haven't read before. If you have read before, it'll help to read, you know, one or two pages every now and then. Now, regarding the guidelines, see, if you uh, see obst obstetrics for hypertension, you will have four guidelines. You'll have two in ACOG and two in, in GTG. So it's easy to finish obstetrics. All the guidelines will say more or less the same thing. So reading them is very, uh, it is going to be quick. So go through class videos, class notes, ACOG, RCOG guidelines and salt test series. That will make the whole revision complete for one chapter. Similarly, diabetes, you have two chapters in ACOG. I don't know if there are one or two chapters in RCOG and then class notes. And then similarly, another very important topic is thromboembolism in pregnancy. So here the guidelines are very important. Infections in pregnancy, the guidelines are very, very important on obstetrics uh, because protocol-based management is there in obstetrics and you should know those protocols. So I'm again stressing that guidelines are very important. PCOS guidelines by HV is such an important guideline that every exam, be it NEET SS or FNB exam, or your INISSAT, they will put at least one or even two or three questions from the PCOS guideline. Endometriosis guideline similarly is also very important. So that's how you have to go about with preparing if you're starting right now. And right now is the time to start preparing. One more very important advice is that do not leave your jobs. Continue. It's you, You're not needed to read for 8 to 12 hours a day right now. In fact, 8 to 12 hours reading is never required. Even in the last days, if you're consistent from now, if you're reading 2 to 3 hours daily, one to two hours daily also, you will not need to take leave from your work. Continue working because many a times, like this year's paper, there were many clinical questions. You'll be able to answer. Uh, you don't know that you're reading so much. You're understanding so much from your clinical practice. You will never know. But continue your clinical practice. You don't need to take off from work to be able to uh, qualify in ETSS. Most of the toppers were still working, were always working. Only consistency matters. So be consistent. Start reading from today itself. I'm there to help you in the telegram group post your questions in the telegram group if you know a questions answer that a student has posted please answer it promptly let there be a two-way discussion um, let us discuss a lot of questions and if you're posting a question from another source in the telegram group if you're posting an mcq from a textbook or from some online uh, source do put the correct answer that they have given and do also include the explanation because i need to know what your doubt is 
uh, we can't, we're not playing a quiz that you uh, present questions to me and you check my knowledge whether I can answer it or not, or whether I'm answering what you were answering. So let's not uh, make it a game. Let's make it uh, our effort to be able to understand the topic. So post the question, post the answer, and give a little hint of what is your doubt? Why are you not satisfied with the answer that they have given? And that way we can do a discussion. And uh, feel free to post questions, please. And feel free to answer them uh, if you know the answer. You know, that makes the discussion more complete if somebody has, someone else has inputs on the topic. So let's prepare together. It is not going to be a very difficult exam. If you read from today, you're going to qualify. That is the only factor. I believe is there. Uh, most of the students who prepare well uh, uh, will be able to clear the exam because OBGY postgraduates, what happens, most of us are women, most of us are struggling with our lives, our marriage and family lives and all those things. And some of us have children. So just to be able to prepare is the most important factor. If you're lucky enough that you have time to work and to prepare, then you will be qualifying if you are consistent. So that's all dear friends, stay in touch with me. Keep posting your questions on Telegram group.